Hello folks, hope you're all enjoying eating and drinking far too much because it's time of year to do that. Today is the 21st of December, as I'm recording this of course, and by the time you see this it will be exactly one year to the day since you all met the lovely Melody, um, or at least some of you did. I've got considerably more subscribers since then, so if you don't know, Melody is my little 1987 Austin Metro, who a subscriber incredibly generously donated, I'd say, to TwinCam last year. So, with my two metros, they're brilliant. Uh, Melvin is now a project, he's off the road for the foreseeable future, and Melody is Melody. She's still broken, but that's because I've not pulled my finger out and fixed it yet. But today, as it's been a year since Melody, I have a new car. And, um, frankly, I'm absolutely chuffed with it. Um, if you really know these cars, you might already be able to tell what it is, judging by the wing mirror. Um, but, oh, this is very proper. This is very, very proper. So I'm not going to keep you all waiting around for ages because that's boring and it only turns you all away. Um, but I'm just going to wait for a few more people to join and to um, join in the live chat and stuff like that because you all need to be guessing. Come on get guessing as to what it could be. Um, again, if you know these cars, you might really already be able to tell um, what it is, but I am so, so chuffed with it. So my requirements for this third car, because people are gonna ask me, are you getting rid of the metros? No, of course I'm not getting rid of the metros, they're staying. Um, but this has got to carry out a very specific task. Because with the metros, I've got brilliant little B-road blasters, um, they handle so well. They're just so much fun to drive. However, this new car has to be a little bit different. So it's totally, totally different from the metros in every single way. Um, but while they can do the whole little back roads thing, this is kind of the A road car. This is the, as I go across the country and do videos and all that kind of stuff, this is going to be comfortable, wafty, um, fast and it's going to get me to my destination in much more comfort than either of the metros ever could. Um, so that's the point of this car. And so in buying it, I had a few very specific points I wanted to hit. So I wanted this car to be quite a bit faster than the metros um, because the metro, neither of the metros are that slow, um, especially Melvin. Melvin's really quite quick, but you know, I wanted something quicker. Um, you know, something that feels genuinely quick. But I didn't want to sacrifice any driving enjoyment, so it still has to have a manual gearbox. It still has to have a chassis that is pretty good. It has to have a reputation for being a good driver's car. That's really important to me, because as a car enthusiast, that's just, it's what I want out of a car. Um, practicality is a point, um, so I wanted an estate car, um, but I wasn't too fussed. At the end of the day, I don't have to carry many things around and, um, you know, the metros are all right, to be fair, with, you know, for carrying loads. Um, but this is all about refinement, about cruising, and about, you know, you can go mad in it if you want, but that's not the point. The point of this car is to be a bit of an old man. Not in the kind of, like, pipe and slippers kind of way, but old man in kind of understated performance. Um, not too flashy. Um, not too in your face, but it can still rip your pants off if, if it so wishes. Any guesses? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my E46 BMW. This is so very, very proper. So, just said I want it to be a bit of a driver's car, and here we have a BMW rear-wheel drive manual gearbox. We're already winning at this point. It's already a very, very good choice, at least I feel. I really like these cars. These are the BMWs of my childhood. So when I was a very, very little kid, um, these were what were spinning round. And now they're kind of at the bottom of their depreciation curve. Um, they're very much within my price bracket, and so here we are. But um, rear wheel drive and a manual gearbox, it's not enough, let's be honest. It needs to sound good as well. For me, quite a lot of the point of getting a car like this is again for it to be totally different to the metros so i'm not going to go and buy it put a tractor engine in it it's not going to be a diesel um, because that's a lack of refinement and i want this car to be refined similarly with a four-cylinder engine four-cylinder engines are not that well balanced so 
why would I bother? Again, the metros both have four-cylinder engines, so this isn't any puny little BMW 318i. No, this is a BMW 325i with the requisite six cylinders it so badly requires. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2500cc M54 straight six. One of the great BMW engines. Um, of course, it's great because it's got six cylinders anyway. Every car with six cylinders is brilliant, um, naturally. But this is kind of the last of the naturally aspirated, brilliant BMW straight sixes. Um, but it's not at all old-fashioned because, of course, this has fuel injection, as you'd expect. It has twin overhead camshafts, 24 valves, um, Vanos, which is BMW's variable valve timing system, all that kind of complicated gubbins. So this, for me, this car has a lot of firsts because not only is it the first car I've ever owned with a five-speed gearbox with fuel injection, actually with twin cams, you know, considering that's the name of my channel. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of firsts here, most importantly being it has the correct number of cylinders. Now, I'm a firm believer that six cylinders is the correct number because you can keep your V8s, you can keep your five cylinders. Um, although I like them all, none of them have the sound or the smoothness of a straight six or a V12. And frankly, V12s are a little, are a little bit kind of out of my price range, both in terms of running costs and in terms of purchase. So straight six it is. Now, um, you all know that I am a fan of small cars. I do believe in small car supremacy, and I still believe in small car supremacy, uh, which is why I've gone for a three. I could very easily have gone for an E39 five series, um, but I decided a three, a little bit more compact. I don't need the extra size, um, and I don't want a one series. Stop having a one series. So 46, three series is what it is. So yes, anyway, M54 straight six, about 190 horsepower. Um, doesn't sound all that much by today's standards. I'm keeping my hands here because it's nice and warm <laughs> on top of the engine. Um, but yeah, 190 horsepower, it's not all that much these days, but that's more than enough to power this along. Um, you know, considering it's only a 325 as opposed to a 330, um, this is the same power as the previous 328i. So early versions of these and the E36 328i, um, which was the top of the range below the M3 same kind of power output as this two and a half so it's all well and good we'll listen to this in a minute of course when we go out for a drive uh, but let's have a little walk around the car so of course this is an e46 saloon um, to be quite honest i would have preferred an estate um, you know estate cars are very much my thing because estate cars are cool um, and second of all practicality uh, because it means i can get more metro parts in the boot of it uh, but this being a saloon doesn't put me off um, if I wouldn't have had an estate, I would have gone for a coupe because the rear doors don't matter. It's all about luggage space in the back. Um, and so the coupe and the saloon are on the same, you know, they're on the same page as terms of that. But the coupes are more expensive and I don't think that's worth paying the price for. And anyway, as I said, this is kind of old man spec. Um, you may have already noticed the colour, the wheels, um, which we'll get to in a minute. And in the windscreen, it has a National Trust sticker, and in the back screen, it has its original dealer sticker. This is proper old man car. So I'm in Lancashire, and I went down to Brighton to go and pick this up, so totally the other end of the country <laughs> to go and pick it up. But that was a nice road trip with my dad for a day to go and get this thing. Um, and it's been flawless ever since. I ended up paying 2995 for it, uh, which is quite a bit of money for a 20-year-old BMW, but in this spec, with this engine and the manual gearbox and all that kind of stuff, more than worth paying for me. Um, we'll get into the history of the car in a minute when we go inside, because I've got all the service book and stuff, but for now, the old man spec suits me down to the ground. It's just so, it's a very grown up car, but not at all boring, because boring would be kind of bank manager spec, you know, it'd just be black with rubbish wheels, um, or actually it would end up being an M Sport one, so, it's fake, you, you know, it would end up being a 318D um, with M Sport suspension, which just makes it rock hard, and M Sport seats. And what's the point? And huge alloy wheels, what's the point in that? No, this is a 325i SE, so um, special equipment. Um, so it's comfy spec. Big engine, manual gearbox, comfy spec. It's all coming together. Perfection. 
so I mentioned the wheels. Um, these are not the original alloy wheels from this car. Originally it would have had much more basic looking ones, but these are, I don't know how many spokes they are actually, but they're loads of spokes. spokes. Apparently they're called Style 73s. I think they're really, really nice looking wheels. In my head, these are the wheels that are on an E39, I think. Um, you know, but this car isn't one of them. But again, I think it gives that kind of grown up vibe that I like. These are 17s, um, so they're not absolutely huge, but they're not tiny, uh, you know, tiny either. So they look like casters. Um, you know, these are pretty nice looking wheels. And um, they've also just been refurbished. In fact, this one is the worst of the lot, because um, it's not absolutely perfect, but still, these have all been reconditioned before I bought the car. Um, doesn't have any locking wheel nuts on it, but that doesn't matter because nobody steals wheels anymore. It's not 1992. Um, so it has normal wheel nuts on it, which need to be changed, and these centre caps are a little bit manky. So I'll change them too, but the wheels have been reconditioned. The paintwork is lovely. Um, this colour is called Grau Gren Metallic, I think, which translates, as you'd expect, as grey green. And in this light, again, we're only looking at a tiny bit of the car now, it does look green. It looks very green, but in certain other lights, it looks totally blue. Um, certainly when I first saw the car, I thought, it's not green, it's blue. But now it does look green in certain lights. It's a really, really lovely colour. Again, light colour. That's very much my thing. I don't like dark colours. I don't like huge wheels. I don't like sports spec when it's not actually a sports car. If you're buying an M3, great. This isn't an M3, it's a 325i. So make it be a nice road car. I love it a bit. Can you tell? I think the E46 is a great looking car. Um, this was, you know, the BMW of my childhood. Um, I love these things, they were everywhere at the time. Um, and I genuinely believe that these are the last genuinely great looking BMW. Uh, because I think the Chris Bangle era, I don't think the cars were especially ugly, but they weren't anywhere near as good looking as these. And I think the BMWs now, they're not even worth mentioning because they're horrendously ugly. Um, but these things, I just think they're so crisp and they still look modern. You know, it's a 20 year old car and I still think it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, especially the rear end. I love just the angles in all this. Yeah, I love it, it's fab. So there are a few little scuffs and stuff around the car. Again, it's a 20 year old car. It's done 92,000 miles. Um, so that's to be expected. Um, you know, a couple of little scratches there. There's a tiny, tiny little bit of rust on one of the rear, on that side's rear wheel arch. Um, again, I'll be putting all pictures up on it so you'll be able to see. Um, but apart from that, it's, it's generally in very good condition. Now, I've not cleaned the car at all. Well, I've cleaned the car, I've not polished it, should I say. I've not gone to town on it and really started, you know, messing with it. Hence why it needs the caps on the wheels doing. It needs some of these scratches, see if we can take them out maybe. Um, and the paint needs bringing to life, it's a bit flat. Um, but time of year, it's just so grim this time of year, so... Um, yeah, anyway, here we are. Um, importantly, 325i, um, very importantly. And yeah, I would have preferred a, um, an estate, but you know, they don't grow on trees. Um, I'm absolutely fine with a saloon one. And it does have a pretty big boot nonetheless. Um, under the floor, it's got spare wheel, of course. It's got the original BMW warning triangle. Um, and behind that little cubby hole inside there is where a CD changer should be. A little bit annoyed it doesn't have a CD changer, but anyway, I bought the car. Um, and also, around the other side, it has an original BMW battery. Now, it's not the original battery because it's just not going to be, is it? Of course it isn't. But nonetheless, it is a genuine BMW battery. God knows how old that is, but the car starts fine, so, you know, let's hope it's not an issue. Um, having spoken about practicality, there are no handles to pull down the seats. This is a car with fixed rear seats, which just shows at times how stingy BMW could be. But anyway, the important bit in here, the reason I actually bring you in here, is of course the toolkit. Um, so it has all its original BMW tools, the 10 and 12 mil. Um, oh no, they're multiple ended actually. Um, and the screwdriver, of course. I've got about four of these that I've nicked from various BMWs my family members have had. Um, but it's got all that fun stuff. If it'll click in, there you go. Um, it's missing two things. It's missing kind of um, an extension of some kind, I think, up here. And it's missing the locking wheel nut. But as I said, there are no locking wheel nuts on it because it's not 1992 anymore. Oh, so B 
business end. Um, again, I'm kind of rushing through this a bit because what we want to do, we want to get driving, really, to be honest, because we want to hear the six cylinderness of it. Um, but this cabin is fantastic. Again, my whole philosophy is I prefer light colours, so the black interior isn't especially my thing, but it does have wood down the dashboard. It does have wood on the steering wheel, so it's still it's in that kind of nice mature mold that I kind of want out of a car. Again, I just don't want anything flashy. I want something, I want a nicely specced car um, and nothing more than that. Black leather, um, which is pretty standard. Again, these are the standard seats. Um, none of your M Sport nonsense here. And it is just a fabulous place to be. The driving position is so spot on. Um, it's just, just so perfect. I've never had a car that has an adjustable steering column or height adjustment on the seats. You know, I'm coming from Metro World where the adjustment is seat forward and back and backrest, and that's all you get. Um, and it actually was a little bit confusing when I first got into this car and I've got all these different controls to mess with. I couldn't find a comfortable driving position because every time you make a change, you've got to change something else. There are so many things, it starts to become just an endless list of changes you can make. But now I've got it, it's so very perfect. So these seats aren't electric, but they are most definitely heated, um, which is great. I love heated seats. It has automatic climate control. It, of course, has the five-speed manual gearbox. Um, you can only get six on a 330, 330 and on an M3. So it's five only in a 325i, I'm led to believe. Um, it has cruise control. It has like heated washer jets and heated mirrors and all that kind of stuff you'd kind of expect. Doesn't have auto wipers, doesn't have auto lights, but I'm not really fussed for them at the end, at, at the end of the day. Um, you know, just the comfort thing. So the cruise control is lovely to have. The heated seats are lovely to have. And I'm happy with that really. So, um, but yeah, it's in really good condition in here. Um, the only things, it's a little bit scratchy on the... Um, you know, on the ashtray cover and the little sunglasses holder down here on the dash. Um, but that's to be expected. It's just that soft um, kind of rubberized material that just deteriorates over time. That's the thing with all cars of this age. Um, but yeah, it's in really, really nice condition. Um, the one thing it does have that's been, well, two things that have been modified, actually. First of all, um, it has an M gear knob. Um, it shouldn't have that, and that will be going because it's not an M car. Um, so that that will go but it feels really nice um, and it has an aftermarket pioneer radio in it which doesn't even fit into the dashboard properly um but you know it's there i have a little usb down here so i can plug my phone into it and that's great i do have a factory bmw business cd to go in this so that will go back in until i eventually end up getting a car play um screen and relocating the climate control so also the climate control it's got air conditioning never had a car with air conditioning before never had a car with airbags before um so this is really moving up into a different league for me um of course electric windows all around they're all down in the center um there's not really too too much to say in here um but it's all really just nice i've got the original floor mats in it as i said it's got heated seats it's just it's just a nice car um and those dials that font and you know the whole style of the instruments is so utterly iconic on its own that it just screams bmw and it's all the better for it i think i think this is the last generation of three series to use the kind of traditional style of bmw instruments and so again that's just another reason that it's cool um but everything's just so clear it has a little onboard computer as well so it can get readouts of um my average mpg and stuff like that um got a little center armrest um, but you know, this is all just kind of boring stuff. Um, it did have a slidey cover over this center thing that I've all pulled away because I wanted to put the phone in it. But um, I'll be getting cup holders for the center here, so I'm not bothered about breaking it. Um, but yeah, what else is there apart from going for a drive? Because I just want to get for a drive, that's all I want to do. Oh, there's no sunroof, that's a bit of a disappointment. Um, I love sunroofs, they're very much my thing. Um, and this is the first car I've owned that doesn't have a sunroof, which is a shame. People would say, oh, but it's got air conditioning. No, absolute rubbish. You don't have a sunroof for, um, for go, you know, staying cool. You have a sunroof because it's cool and it lets all the light in. It, you know, it bathes the interior in light. So, you know, in some countries, a sunroof might not be acceptable. But in the UK, where you get like four days of sun a year, sunroofs are great. Um, so there's that. Um, the electric windows, the two back ones work perfectly. The passenger one I don't use because it made horrible clicky noises the first time I did. 
and the driver's one is a bit slow coming up but that's a very e46 plot problem and um, there are a few problems these cars have um cooling system being another um that you know that they're known to have a few issues actually how bmw managed to get a reputation for building these bulletproof fantastic cars i don't know they drive brilliantly but they're riddled with faults um i mean my metros don't have as many issues as these are known for i watched a you know a bmw e46 buyer's guide that lists all the kind of common issues it's 40 odd minutes long ridiculous um that's just that's just bmw for you because oh no but it's good reliable german car no rubbish i'm buying this because it's got a straight six not because it's a reliable car um oh yeah it has a cd player so i've brought cds with me the river's a great album um but anyway i wanted to get into here um you know the the book pack so this has all the original books and stuff you know the original radio code the business cards from the people at the dealer um again sorry for the sniffles i've got a cold um but 325i SE Saloon, first registered 28th of March 2002. I wasn't yet two years old. Um, this is an old car. Oh, some people, people seem really amazed about the fact that time moves. Yeah, time moves. Get with it. You're old. <laughs> I'm getting old. Everyone's getting old. But anyway, uh, in here, I was trying to say, oh, that's brake fluid and stuff. Yeah, again, it has a massive amount of history with it, this car. Um, not everything, but it has loads, and I'm very pleased to see if I can actually flick the page. So the pre-delivery check by Tice Dorchester BMW, and then first service, second, third, fourth, all by the original dealer. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, all by the original dealer. So this is 2011 was when it was last serviced by the original dealer. Um, so what nine years it's just incredible and then it was taken to an independent after that and then it was serviced by the guy who bought it off in October so the story behind this car apparently this is all just what I've been told off the guy that I bought it from who knows whether it's any of it's the truth or not but apparently this car was a demonstrator so this was the car actually I forgot my CDs um, this was the car that if you went into a BMW dealer you'd take for a test drive um, so this was original dealer demonstrator and then it was sold privately to its first owner who had it for five years and then its second owner had it for 13 years um, of course it's a 20 year old car um, and after well, unfortunately the guy who had it for 13 years he died apparently and his widow couldn't bring herself to sell the cars say cars because he had this and he also apparently had an E39 BMW alongside it in the garage so clearly there's a bit of enthusiasm going on here. Um, so, so she eventually sold the two cars to the guy I bought them off, who was kind of a part-time dealer, deals, you know, trades cars from home. Um, so that's why I bought it off. Who knows whether any of that's the truth or not, but that's the idea. And I, it's absolutely plausible because clearly, you know, this car isn't ridiculously clean, um, but it is in very nice condition. It's clearly been loved. Um, there's a few things that are a little bit, you know, that need doing, like the wheel centre caps, a little bit of rust. There are a few more scratches on it than you expect from a car that was really enthusiast owned. But again, it's 20 years old and it's done 92,000 miles. And then there's that stereo, which is horrendous. So that will be going. But anyway, let's go for a drive. Let's go for a drive. Sorry for the kind of slightly odd field of view here my regular camera mount i've left somewhere so um this is a backup one that's a little bit bulkier so um sorry for the strange view all the climate control doing its things very much all of the yes let's have a little bit of fun here just for a second Again, the car is up to temperature. I've only been sat here for 20 minutes just while I did that walk around thing, so. Oh, sounds so good. So, um, heated seat on, very much on, because I just love that. Um, oh. There's gonna be a lot of that. As you can tell, it's just so very nice and relaxed. 
and it's so very very smooth and you know the, it, it, the car fundamentally is in very good condition not absolutely perfect but what enamors itself is the way it drives because it can poodle around and just be very comfortable and very refined and I mean that's a level crossing there and you can more hear it than feel it I mean it's not the best ride quality in the world of course it's not uh, it's a BMW it's always going to be naturally more performance inclined but it's not M Sport it's still got a nice ride quality to it um, and it can just do this all day sit very nicely in fourth gear at 30 miles per hour and just bumble about the place in supreme smoothness because that's the thing the six cylinders gives it all of the smoothness in the world and yeah the vibe from this video is that I'm nothing but an old man yeah totally but that makes it so nice this road's awful and it's still nice and comfortable I can hear it a little bit but I can't especially feel it you are gonna wait thank you very much but then when you want it to, it can stop doing the, well, it will still do the smooth thing, but it can stop doing the quiet, refined thing, and instead, do a bit of this. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, it's really rather quick. Again, as I said, 190 horsepower is not too, too much. But it's just enough, just enough to make it feel really quick. In fact, you know, I say this about Metros, you don't need anything quicker than them. This car is too quick to really hustle about and have fun on a country road in. But if you need the performance, oh, it's so very there. And it's not too pronounced in its engine note either. There's certainly no exhaust noise. Um, Alpha 159, nice choice. Um, but you know, it's it's a very, very refined power unit. And that's 60 miles per hour. It's just, it's just so capable, so capable. See, I've already realised that this is too quick. The metros are more fun on a country lane. It, you know, a country lane is not this car's style. This car's style is blasting down a motorway. Um, not at silly speeds, but just being refined and nice. And that's why I've got it. Because it can be nice and refined and do all that kind of stuff. And it's still fun to drive. The steering is so good on it. It's so stable. The steering is... You know, it, the steering is accurate, very accurate, and it's nicely weighted as well. Of course, it's power steering, um, hydraulic power steering, um, and it's just so very, very nice to drive, and it kind of wafts very nicely through the countryside. It, you know, it corners so flatly, it rides so smoothly over all the jiggly little bits of countryside, um, but it's not a B-Road warrior. The steering doesn't have the precision of the metros in it. Um, the throttle response might as well not exist. Um, a lot of people will argue with me, with me on that point, but that's because they're not used to cars with carburettors. I drive cars with carburettors, and carburettor throttle response is just better. So driving a car with injection, you can feel the lack of response, but... It's just like, it's so effortless in it, and it makes such a great noise. As I said when we were under the, under the bonnet, six cylinders, six and 12, are the two correct number of cylinders for a car. It's just the best. And yet when you get up to speed, it's brilliant because it still remains refined. 
and the tyres are not the best on it. The tyres are brand new. They were done when the wheels were refurbished by the guy who bought it off, but the tyres aren't the best, so I'm not bothered about wearing them out. <laughs> Um, I'm not bothered about getting the rear axle spinning, which it will do very nicely. And it's been very, very cold the last week in the UK. Um, it's a bit warmer today, it's about seven degrees, um, but it has been minus 10. I've had it on the dash actually, minus 10. Um, and it has been genuinely bitter. And in the ice, this will this will very go sideways, uh, you know. But the thing about it as well is that despite the fact it lacks a little bit of the finesse in the steering of the metros and lacks the poise of the metros actually it's a little bit it wallows more than the metros again the problem with this car is that they're to totally different things this car is designed to be a family saloon car and to go very quickly the metros are not designed to do that you know by my metric this car's 400 kilos too heavy um, to be a driver's car But it still goes about its job very, very nicely. And the gearing is quite long as well in fifth gear, so it can just cruise so nicely along. I love it, I absolutely adore it. I'm not gonna do a full road test on this, yet, in this video, because I'm gonna do that, you know, I'm gonna give the car its own proper kind of normal video, um, and do one on the 46 3 Series once I've, you know, changed some things about the car. Um, probably once I've given it a service as well. Um, it did have a service. In fact, I'll do the service in the spring, actually. I'll just do other things up until then. So I'll do the radio. I'll change the gear. You know, I'll put those cup holes in. I will do the wheel center caps. I'll give it a polish, you know, and just make it a nice car. Um, but it feels so very solid. It sounds great. Drives brilliantly. No indication of anything untowards with the way it drives it just feels so very nice um, but when I bought the car it was on 91,200 miles it's now on 92,600 so you know I've done quite a lot of miles um, since I bought this car considering I only had it three weeks or so and I don't have a commute this is just from either going out for drives like today or from you know going to see friends or whatever. So I have done quite a few miles. Oh, oh, it was a Mark One Cortina. They are fit. They're just such good looking cars. Anyway, back to E46s. You can't see me now. That sun is awful. Again, winter sun. Um, today's the day of the winter solstice. Um, so it's not the right day to be recording this video. But despite the fact you can't see me, <laughs> um, yeah, I've done quite a lot of miles in the car. And it's not that bad on fuel at all. It's really good, actually. Um, when I drove it home, um, when I picked it up from near Brighton and I brought it back home, I did 41 mpg. 41 mpg from a two and a half litre straight six in a big saloon car. Just cannot argue with it because, th and that actually proves the point. It's not what you drive, it's kind of how you drive it. You could, you know, you could drive, there's an Igo in front of me, you could drive that Igo like you stole it and it will do 20 mpg and then it's like, oh it's using loads of fuel or you could drive this smoothly smoothly and in view of trying to get good fuel economy and you can get 41 mpg out of it so you know that's not an issue considering what it is it is quite economical i'm quite pleased with what it's done so far so in those 1400 miles nothing has gone wrong yet who knows what will happen tomorrow but I've had one thing, the airbag warning light came on when my brother got in the car for the first time and immediately yanked the seat backwards and forwards. So I'm gonna guess it's the plug under the seat that's come loose. And so I just need to put that in, reset the code, and that'll be that'll all be fine. Um, but yeah, that's not really an issue. That's just modern car stuff. Again, old cars are better because you don't have anything like that to ruin your day. But everything just works, it's so nice. And again, you can see me, you can't see the entire frame but I'm just so relaxed into this car now. I've got my arm rest in the centre, I've got my heated seat on. I'm just going about my nice old man business doing BMW things in straight six. Smoothness, comfort and performance. It's brilliant. It's absolutely smashing. Um, so there is there are two rattles that I've discovered in it. One is this driver's seat that squeaks a little bit every now and then. And the other is the is the radio again rubbish. 
again once that comes out and all this stupid panelling around it is removed that should go but you know for a 20 year old car to have such a small list of things wrong with it and it makes that noise utterly supreme love it to bits all the talk in the world. It's just the best. It's just brilliant. It's such a nice change from the metros because the metros are great and they're never going. I'm always going to have Melvin in my life at least. Um, and, you know, this, this just complements that in every way because it's nothing like those cars. It's big and beefy and makes six cylinder noises. It's great in a totally different way. And that's what I wanted. Because, you know, the second Metro came into my life very accidentally. Um, that, was, that was all through goodwill, through kindness. And I'm eternally thankful for that. But now finally having, you know, that was two sides of the same coin, having an A-Series and a K-Series car. They feel very different, but they're still the same thing. Whereas this is a totally different kettle of fish. So, I hope you all like this new car. We don't have a name for it yet, so if anyone can think of a name, then that would be great. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to give it a name. The names for the two metros happened kind of accidentally. Uh, they were both given to the cars by friends of mine. None of my friends have come up with good names for this car yet, and I'd like it to be something German, because it's a Bavarian car. Um, so, you know, that's something I quite like. But apart from that, it's just so very nice. Love it to bits. Love it to bits. And I hope all you do too. Because there will be some E46 videos coming of certain small modifications. Um, you know, certain things I always want to do to a car, servicing, etc. Be, it won't be massively heavy because, you know, I'm restoring Melvin. And Melody's got a lot of work coming on her that you'll see in January. But it's brilliant. Love it to bits. I'm very, very happy with it. So, with that... I think I'll leave you all in peace for your evening or your morning, depending on where you are in the world. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do, of course, click like and subscribe to Twin Cam as well, though. If you're watching this live, I'm sure you probably already have. I also have a Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. Um, it's a massive help, especially with Melvin's restoration coming up. Um, you all get early access to my videos and occasionally you get a Patreon exclusive. Um, but yeah, with that, I'll have more videos. Coming along soon. Straight six videos. <laughs> oh, what a hilarious car.